Hello everybody, Remrov here. Um, not long ago I was interviewed by a teacher from a, uh, from a, a school, a college, um, College André Grasset. And um, this was done for the students over there. It was done in an interview. Um, it was about my, uh, my book that I wrote, Connecting with the Autism Spectrum, and about my autism and my art, etc. And after the students uh, saw my video, um, saw this video with my interview in it, um, they prepared uh, a lot of questions for me to uh, answer in uh, another interview, and uh, that was also done. But there were a lot of questions left, and so I thought it would be nice to make a video in which I answer their questions. So I put um, all their questions in this, uh, in this box. And um, so I'll just dive right in and uh, take uh, the questions out of here, question one by one, and um, answer them. So uh, there we go. Um, the first question, I'm not gonna look, I'm just picking them out randomly. Uh, first question, uh, is the information about autism that you read online or in books real and does it match your experience? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I have read books that I don't agree with personally or that don't really match my experience and I've also um, read things online that I don't really like. That don't, that don't really uh, match with my experiences. But there's also a lot of books and um, websites online that portray very, very well what um, matches with my experiences. For example, um, well, a TV show as well, like The Good Doctor, for example. I personally uh, identify a lot with the main character. In, uh, on that, in that uh, TV show, but I've also heard from a lot of other artistic people that they don't identify with it at all. Um, I would say that it's not portrayed very um, correctly. So it, it totally depends. Although I do think that there's a lot of good information out there online and um, a, a, a lot of good books. I especially like books that are uh, written by autistic people themselves um, and also websites that are created by autistics themselves. Um, that's um, personally I think you can learn from the most what autism is really like and what it feels like. Okay, a second question. What inspired you to become an artist? Okay. Um, becoming an artist went very gradually uh, for me. Um, I was drawing um, when I was very little. I started drawing as soon as I was old enough to hold a pencil. I was always drawing. Uh, it helped me to stay, to feel safe. Um, I knew as a little kid that when I was drawing, people wouldn't ask me questions. I was left alone. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, since I had a lot of troubles with uh, communicating and, and answering questions and things like that, um, that was very helpful to me, that if people just let, let, would leave me alone. Um, it, it wasn't a decision like from one day to another, like, oh, I, I really want to become an artist. Um, it went very gradually over the years. I, I do have a an artist that I admire a lot, which is, uh, his name is uh, Richard Simons, and he makes very beautiful, uh, realistic um, drawings and paintings of uh, animals. And I do see him an, as an inspiration for my, uh, for my drawings. Um, third question. They're sticking together a bit. Okay, with all the time that you are dedicating to understanding autism, do you now see yourself differently? 
Um, I don't think I necessarily see myself differently. What does help is knowing that you're not alone and to recognize it from other people who are also autistic. That helps a lot. And um, uh, sometimes like when you don't have a lot of self-confidence or you get unsure about yourself, uh, about your autism. Yeah, and to, to understand why you're struggling with, with certain things. It, that, that helps a lot. But I haven't necessarily seen myself differently. Um. Okay, good question though. They're all pretty good questions. Okay, fourth question. Did you feel relieved to be not be diagnosed with autism because it finally all made sense, like your troubles at school and with communication, etc.? Uh, yes, I was I was very relieved because in the first 21 years, I was diagnosed when I was uh, 21 years old, and the first 21 years of my life, um, I was um, going through every uh, every day with mimicking others because I just didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know how to socialize, interact with others. So in order to fit in, I just mimicked others without understanding their behavior or their words or anything. Um, and yeah, you wonder, of course, why why I was always wondering why don't I have friends? Why is it so difficult for me to make friends? Why, I, why am I having so many difficulties with understanding um, teachers at school? And why do I get drained so, so, so fast and get tired just because of like noises and, and chaos and like my sensory issues and things like that. So uh, I was very relieved to be finding out that to be finally be diagnosed that you know what it is and why why I had all these struggles and um, also knowing that you're not alone that you're not the only one and there are a lot of other people um, who uh, uh, yeah who have the same and struggle with the same it's it helped a lot next question Do you feel pressure to conform to society's expectations of normalcy? Uh, yes. Um, now that I'm self-employed, not so much anymore because I'm in my own space and I can just uh, be who I am. But especially when I was still, when I still had a job and I worked for an employer, um, I had a lot of, I felt a lot of pressure and it caused a lot of anxiety like every single day to just like present yourself in the way it was expected and to communicate correctly, to find the correct words, and to find uh, the correct tone of voice, how you speak to your employer and, and to um, uh, colleagues. Um, also with like uh, making friendships, like Am I, uh, I want to be a good friend. Um, um, yeah, am I living up to the expectations, things like that. So yeah, it is definitely part of my life uh, to feel a bit of that pressure. Um, some days more than others and in some situations more than others though. Next question. Were you able to get good grades at school even though you didn't get the resources you needed? Well, if we talk about elementary school, for example, um, I did get okay grades. Not very good, but okay. Just enough to make it to the next year. Um, but it was not because I um, understood everything so perfectly. Uh, not at all. I had a lot of tricks. I had a lot of tricks to get myself through every day and to uh, to get some um, okay grades. Uh, for example, I like uh, I cheated a lot. I looked at other kids' work with all kinds of tricks I had for it. Like um, that, I pretended I had to go to the, the, the to the bathroom, and then uh, while walking out of the classroom, I looked. I peeked at other kids' work, so I knew what I was supposed to do, 
or I dropped a pencil really close to somebody else's desk and then while picking it up I peeked at their work and uh, I just literally copied their work um, without knowing what, what I was supposed to do because I couldn't follow the teacher. They were just uh, learning in school is just impossible for me because of all the sensory inputs. It's just too noisy, too chaotic for me to follow the teacher or to read uh, a book. Um, so often I just didn't know what to do. And um, another trick was like with my um, uh, photographic memory. I just memorized everything that was written in books. Um, I memorized every single word, uh, every page. I just took a picture of it with my mind. Um, and um, without understanding the text. And uh, that way I could get uh, an okay grade for uh, a test, for example, like history or geography or any other test. Um, so with tricks, yeah, I, I got okay grades. Another question. What is your favorite drawing and why? I think my most favorite drawing is the drawing of my um, little feathered friend Pilaf. Pilaf was my uh, little feathered friend for 18 years and he meant a lot to me. He was uh, even, um, he was certified as my uh, um, therapy animal, as a therapy support animal. And he, al he always helped me a lot with challenges I face as an autistic person. And uh, yeah, so I definitely consider that my, um, my most favorite drawing. Okay, last question for now. I'm probably going to make uh, a few more videos in which I answer all these other questions. Because there's quite a few more questions. What kind of music do you listen to when you, were draw when you are drawing? Oh, all kinds of music. I, on my computer, I have a whole playlist of uh, classic, classical music, pop, uh, rock, uh, jazz, uh, rap, uh, house, um, a little bit of techno. <laughs> I have all kinds of different music. I don't, I don't really have, yeah, there's like bands or singers that I like, Bruce Springsteen, for example, uh, Jackson Brown, I have some songs, Passenger has good music, I find, uh, but I have uh, such a different, such a big range of uh, music that I like, um, that I listen to. Yeah, so, um, that was it. I'm, um, as I said, I'm gonna do uh, uh, more videos because I have uh, quite a few questions left in here. Uh, really good questions from those students. I just wanna uh, thank those students for making these questions for me. It's uh, really, really cool. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you with my next videos again. Bye.